Hello, and welcome back. So, I bought this HDMI to AV mini converter upscaler 1080p, whatever they say. Let's take a look at this thing and see if it's any good. I'll be taking a look at uh, specifically issues I've encountered, showing you guys, and explaining why it's happening. But spoiler alert, do not purchase this, it's not really working. But is it? Let's find out. Stick around, I have a bunch of information to give you. Let's go. First question is, what would bring a person to uh, edge of existence to decide and purchase this thing? Well, for me it was that I already purchased a couple of these and they seem to work just fine for what they are designed to. But in this case, I needed something to connect a PlayStation 3 or even Raspberry Pi 3 to a CRT TV. And why do I have a CRT television? It's because I like to play older consoles, older games, and they look the best on CRT TV. But like I've said, I have some newer equipment as well, and I would like to be able to connect that equipment to this particular TV and get as best picture as possible. So let's take a look at my setup. What am I working with here? So I have a CRT TV, and I am trying to connect a PlayStation 3 to this particular TV using the HDMI cable, so I will have to first connect the HDMI cable to this little box. And on the other end, I connect AV cables to this little box and then connect it straight to the TV. And we get a grey motherfucking scale image. That is, it's in black and white. And that's not the result we wanted. As you can see, I connected everything as I've told you guys. And the question is, well, what's the solution? Sadly, you cannot modify or do something to this particular thingy to make it show color. You do have a switch to choose whether you want a PAL or NTSC. Now what? Does this thing refer to the signal coming in or to the signal coming out? Doesn't matter. Whichever option you choose, if you flip the switch, you still get interferences and issues. So, the best solution I can offer you, and it's not ideal, but it's to purchase another converter box. So, a big thumbs down. The question remains, why does this happen and how do we prevent this from happening again? In the future, when you decide to purchase another converter box, how do you know if it's going to work? Let's do a little test, and through this test, let me give you the answer to that question. Remember my older videos about good old EasyCab 2.0? That's the device we're going to utilize in this particular video to find out what exactly is going on with this device. What signal is it exactly outputting? The things we are looking for, if you remember, is, for example, is it outputting NTSC signal? Is it NTSJ? Is it PAL-B? PAL-D? C? Which signal is it exactly? It's not enough to just say it's a PAL signal. Well, what exactly is it? Is it PAL-B? PAL-C? There's so many of these letters, you never know. So let me answer that question. Here is how I am approaching this. I have a PlayStation 3 that is connected to this HDMI to AV box. And then this box is connected to EasyCab 2.0. EasyCab 2.0 is connected to the laptop and on the laptop I am running a program called Bandicam. Bandicam gives us the option to access and adjust the settings in a little bit more detail and it's gonna show us what signal exactly is this box transmitting. Basically, any signal that looks good, that provides good color and doesn't have any interferences is the signal that the box is providing. And of course, any signal that has any issues, interferences, is in black and white or isn't showing correct colors is the wrong type of signal. So Bandicam has the option to open up device selection window and then under device I choose OEM device and I press the settings button. This will open up the properties. Let's pause really quickly. This little box has a switch that lets you choose what type of signal it outputs. Moving this switch to the other side actually gives you the corresponding information on the screen. At this moment the switch is moved to the NTSC and that's what we see in the upper left corner. 
And now let's move through the video standards and see which one of them works. As soon as I get to NTSC-MJ and then NTSC-M, both of these work. NTSC-433 doesn't, the screen is grayscale with some lines, it's not working. And then obviously all the PAL signals also show you the incorrect image. Also there is a SECOM, whatever this is, signal and once again the image is not correct. Now let's switch the box to the PAL signal and move through the video standards to see which PAL signals or standards actually work. So obviously all the SECOM signals do not work. We get to PAL 60, PAL N, M, all of a sudden PAL I, H, J, D, B works. NTSC 433 works as well for some reason and obviously the other NTSC standards do not work. So for example over here we see that PAL N and M do not work. I actually took the liberty to check this little paper that they send you with some type of instructions, specifications and stuff like that. I was looking for the information that tells me what signal does this thing output. Under specifications there is actually CVBS output. It says PAL, NTSCM and NTSCJ, which is exactly what works, but when it comes to PAL, we, we don't have exact uh, standard, it just says PAL, so you would think that all PAL standards should work, but they don't. So, wish they just included this information, but there you go, I'm doing it now in this video. Just so you know, even though it says PAL, not all PAL standards work. Oh, one more thing. Some of you might think, wait, this thing actually has a USB plug. It does say that it comes with USB cable, but if you flip this paper to the other side, it says low power, no power adapter. So what's going on here as well? So here's the situation, let me clarify this. This thing, first of all, doesn't require any power. Even if you do connect the USB cable and you plug it into some kind of adapter, whether it's 0.5 amps or 1 amp, doesn't make any difference. This thing doesn't work better. It works without a cable, so why is there a need for the cable? Pfft. Honestly, who knows? And finally, if your CRT TV doesn't support PAL M, N, or PAL 60, you will not get a good image. This thing is not compatible. And honestly, I did not even think about this little detail. I did not even think that this would matter. All I thought is it's a PAL signal, who cares, it's gonna accept PAL signals, all of them. Why make an exclusions here? But no, 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 this little thing does not support all PAL standards, that is. So guys, there's your answer. This thing supports only these particular signals that are displayed on the screen, so if you have a television set that actually accepts these standards, that is, it's gonna work for you, this box will work. Before I go, just to answer one more thing, yes, if you do connect your device through this particular box to your CRT TV, you do get better quality image, definitely, it looks way better, and the FPS is way better, but yeah, simply if it works, but for me, at this moment, it doesn't work. So it is their fault! Yes, but not entirely. Both sides are to blame a little bit, but in my opinion, ultimately, it's the seller and manufacturer who should provide you with exact specifications and things you should be looking out for. Like I've said, never in my wildest dreams did I think that these were little details I need to pay attention to, but you know how they say, devil is in the details. Thank you for watching this video, I will see you in future episodes. Priest, signing out.